we have clients that want high end or women women and then uh of course uh i make sure they can't have the money they they collect the money um i'll be waiting for money but at the same you know i collect all of it uh they don't get to take part of it i have to take care of them though so i'm the one controlling the women uh, the money and the finances i'll take care of six or seven at a time in a one house um and uh, you know uh, pretty much, you know, I'm giving them money, the, the 24th Street money after about a week or so, about ten to $30,000 a week, depends on how busy we are. They were forced to take drugs, not by you, but by the gang. In and certain situations, they get them yeah. The heroin, and now they give them to you, so... And, and you know, certain situations where you're kidnapping girls and forcing This them. is Gotham Investigations, and I'm your host, Jeff Giordano. Human trafficking, we can define it as modern-day slavery not just involving prostitution, it may involve architectural work, forced labor. But today, you're gonna meet an individual that was running the prostitutes in Hialeah, recruiting them from not only foster homes, but from the street. Why is this important? You may have a daughter, you may have a son, you may have a niece, you may have a nephew that can fall prey to one of these predators. Stay tuned so you can prepare yourself on how to prepare your family. We have an individual here today, we're gonna call him the white rat, but uh, pretty much the scum of, of, of the earth. Do you want me to leave? What do you mean, do I want you to leave? You call me? You're not talking about me, right? Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe maybe we might want to refer you to as a, a pimp, where I, I, I guess that you refer yourself, uh, the abbreviation of pimp, a uh, positive, intellectual, motivated person. Is that your interpretation of the word pimp? I'm an entrepreneur. Does that suit you a little bit? I guess so. I'm an entrepreneur, yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll say you're a, a personal, motivated individual here, and we'll redefine that because... Uh, a lot of people ask Gotham Investigations and myself, well, you know, why do, would you deal with these people? Why would you have them on the show? They're such a crucial part of not only the police department, but for a private investigator to have confidential informants. And when we spoke with the White Rat, this is part of our investigation and investigation techniques. When we spoke to him, he actually wanted to come forward because the word on the street was he knew that Jesse was being set up. You want to tell us uh, about your time in uh, running these prostitutes, you know, for the gang, the 24th Street uh, gang? Yeah, I mean, let's just get this clear. First off, I'm not in a gang. I'm not part of the 24th Street gang. Um, I, I'm pretty much above that. You know, I ran girls for them or they, you know, they would have, uh, you know, I'd have girls. I'd, you know, take care of them and, you know, oh. Yeah, I would I would take care of the girls for the the the, the 24th Street um, and and many other people. Uh, not many. Uh, oh shoot, it's falling on me. So, <laughs> so so when you say take care of the yeah, the girls. I, mean, I, I you know they they don't they don't collect money. They they have you know uh, you know they're you know we have clients that want high end or women women and then. Uh, of course, uh, I make sure they can't have the money. They they collect the money. Um, I'll be waiting for money, but at the same, you know, I collect all of it. Uh, they don't get to take part of it. I have to take care of them though. So I'm the one controlling the women, uh, the money, and the finances. I'll take care of six or seven at a time in a one house, um, and uh, you know, uh, pretty much. You know, I'm giving them money, the the 24th Street money after about a week or so, about ten to thirty thousand dollars a week, depends on how busy we are. Um, and uh, yeah, I would, uh, you know, if they needed tampons, I'm buying them tampons. You know, they didn't get to have the money because they'd spent all the money on drugs. Uh, so we made sure the girls, you know, had everything they needed to, um, you know. To maintain their lifestyle. Yeah, I mean, they have to believe in my vision, so they have to believe in me. They have to believe in what I'm doing so that they're, it's easier for them to give their money away. And they also have to feel secure and, and protected so, you know, that we provide all that for them. And then, of course, you know, they're, they're also getting drugs um, to keep them going. So, 
So would you allow them to have, say, a boyfriend if they had like a regular No, they boyfriend? can't have any boyfriends. They can't, you know, it's either they're with us and they want their drugs or, you know, it's, it's, it becomes a slippery slope and you got guys following around doing stuff and causing problems that we don't want. Okay, so basically if they had a boyfriend, it was bad news because then they start getting information yeah, on your we don't want that. We don't want that, don't yeah. Want that. No. Okay. Now when we're talking su supplying them with drugs to keep their uh, habits going, uh, we understand that, that some of these girls were uh, not by you, but they were drugged up by the gang themselves. And when they're seasoned, Correct. Uh, it's here you go, white rat. This Correct. Yeah, I, I'm not really in the finding these girls, you know, that need to be, you know, addicted to drugs. They get them addicted to drugs, get them reliant on them, and then pass them to me. And then, you know, we get clients and get, you know, pretty much sexually ex exploit them, um, you know, for money. And uh, we just take, I take care of them, and I'm, you know, separate from the gang, or uh, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so, so you would have, like, say, a, a rental house, a location. Correct. Uh, I mean, you, it's not like you're getting applications from these girls, so you don't know if they're 15, 16 years old. You don't know if they're 22 years old. Yeah. Obviously, you see a good product. Yeah, we don't even, girl. sometimes we don't even know their name. <laughs> yeah. The real name, at least. The real name, and you, I guess you assign them names, and that's right. the name you call them by, because you don't want to know their personal history. No, I don't want to have any, it, like, attachment to these, you know. It's almost um, kind of like a, a, a terrorist, you know, believe it or not, when a, when a terrorist... Uh, one of the train attacks that we have with terrorism one of their tactics is is they they put hoods over your face right away because they don't want to identify you as a human so when it comes time to take you out uh, there's no personal connection with that individual correct but in this case you know you're just assigning them names because you don't want to hear their personal name you don't want to hear their personal story well um Go on. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, you want the girls to really believe in what you're telling them. You know, you don't want them to, if they don't believe in you, you're not, they're going to take your money or, you know, you're not going to get the money from them. So ultimately, you do want them to, to trust you. You just got to keep them under, you know, make sure that they're not, uh, you know, give, take, keeping money on the side or <clears throat> that they're ready to, you know, completely you know just believe in what you're what you're trying to tell them to do and that they, they want their drugs so bad that they'll just do whatever you tell them to do and now have you ever had one of them say you know white rat help me i want to get out of this environment oh uh, yeah a few times you know the girls would be like hey you know maybe my life would be better if i did this or did that but you never really kind of cater to what they're what they uh you know their dreams you kind of try to shut their dreams down to try to keep them going especially if they're making a lot of money for you you know because some girls it's not always about the the way the girl looks it's just about how often you know how much is she really working how much is she really making for you guys so if she's do good you don't want her <laughs> so if she's a good worker you know a, a high in demand i'm sure a lot of your clients are repetitive clients correct, correct. uh now you were even mentioning how uh you, there were certain uh, officers from the department that uh, even though they didn't deal with you directly, you know that they were dealing in, in, in weapons, in drugs, in exchange for uh, sex. Can you uh, expand on that a little bit? Because you would deliver some of those girls to these officers. <sighs> yeah, so... Uh uh, yeah, I mean, we, we didn't just have girls here in Hialeah or anywhere we're at. Um, it's between Broward, Dade, Palm Beach. Uh, they're high-end girls, girls that even if you, you're not just girls that are on the streets, on the corner, like you might think. It's it's usually girls that would be sought after by anybody um, that would be willing to pay a lot of money. Um, excuse me, say a question again? What we were at? The, uh, the officers, uh, oh, yeah, so we the, had discussed police officers so officers involved, you know would, would get involved with the uh with uh with the gangs obviously around uh they wanted you know to have sex you know where they're probably married and you know wanted to something else on the side and you know they would provide us with certain weapons uh you know confiscated drugs uh that we'd be able to get through them uh certain officers all, all around especially here in dade county so you were talking about this particular case involving sergeant jesse Menicall. Yeah, the sector I would want to call it that you were in charge of. 
Uh-huh. Uh, I, I see you're probably working on a, 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 an order right now, but you said you're it's, out of it. So yeah, I, no, I I'm definitely not. I do pest control and uh, okay. And I know, you know. You're, you're dealing with uh, dancers in, in some of these Russian strips. Yeah, I like some know. Russian uh, Russian. I like the Russian girls now. So we'll get we'll get into that. But uh, as far as the Sergeant Menacol, I remember you telling me that uh, Sergeant Menacol uh, was one of the officers that didn't want to play the game. Right. He, he wasn't out there. To he get, never let us slide. He never let you slide. Uh, and other highly officers. Which is funny. <laughs> were kind of on the take, but they were on the take with sex. Correct. And some of them, to our understanding, you said they even provided some, some weapons and some protection to some of these gang members when another gang would come in because their thing, a lot of gangs have different uh, things that they're involved in. The 24th Street Gang, one of their, their major things was the human trafficking and, and, and prostitution mm-hmm. type of thing. And you were telling me that Jesse, uh, he didn't want nothing to do with it. He wasn't going to protect these girls at all. Is that what you were telling me? Correct. Yeah, yeah. He didn't want anything to do with it, even though he was you know, doing whatever he was doing. And, uh, you know... Um but yeah, he wouldn't let us slide. He wouldn't look the other way ever. Uh, he was always trying to follow us or, you know, just harassing us a lot if he didn't, uh, you know. But in the end, I think he was doing the same thing. <laughs> he, just tried, he was accusing us of what he was actually doing, you know. So. Okay, when you say uh, accusing you of... Or not me, or just anybody in, in, in with the girls, you know, trying to, you know, investigate us okay. and trying to figure out stuff and trying to take us down. Okay. So basically, he was like balls to the wall, wasn't going to take any kickbacks for sex or anything. Correct. And you had also mentioned to me, part of this, you agreeing to, to be on this podcast and, and, and video was um, you knew he took that a the game deal. was going to set him up. Correct. But you then he took the a plea deal. Yeah, 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 I knew the gang was going to set him up. And then he took a plea deal. And now I'm just curious as to why he would do that, you know? Okay, why he would do that? Because you know, he because you know he was set up, and you know if he knew he was set up, uh, why would he, you know, take the plea deal? Now, now you had mentioned one of the girls that that you were you were running, uh, that was a gang member as well. Yeah, Susie, S- Susie, Susie Betancourt. Yeah, uh, she was actually thrown out of. Uh, well, let me rephrase that. Because there has well, been no arrest. Well, most people think or heard. She jumped out of a car, out of a vehicle, and she was in that vehicle with three other gang members, and I guess they well, ruled that's what it they as w- an accident. Well, I mean, that's what you'd want to, they'd want you to think, but I mean, uh, you know, the word is that they, they threw her out, you know, because she didn't want to cooperate with uh, coming forward uh, towards him. Okay, so, so basically, like when I spoke to you, you said that, uh, yeah, Susie Betancourt, uh, the gang went to her, and she had a, a personal relationship with Jesse. When I say a personal relationship, it wasn't like a sexual relationship. That, uh, uh, and even speaking to Jesse, Jesse knew her from the street, and he wanted to, to give her help, and he wanted to get her out of there. So since this gang knew his affiliation with her, and he was not only a threat to their to their income, to their operation, the thing, he yeah. was a threat to one of their best uh, uh, marketing individuals that was bringing in money sure. that the gang was trying to get her to come up with uh, what you said were false ex- you know, sexual allegations uh, and she wasn't going to play that game because he was actually her friend correct can you expand on that a little bit well uh, not really <laughs> can you, basically what i said is basically what yeah you kind of <laughs> said it uh you know i'm i you know i don't know i wasn't there but i'm pretty confident that she was thrown out they want to get rid of her because yeah, that was the word on the street that's what i'm, I'm that not, she I'm didn't want to participate in i would say lying allegations to get him out because he was just trouble for the entire operation you know you have, you have somebody trying to take down a whole operation they're going to try to get rid of that person it's just it's in politics it's in everything <laughs> yeah well we we see what's going on in today's society. And the sad thing is that uh, the, the other allegations came from other gang members. So once this happened and a death happened, um, they couldn't, the police department couldn't investigate it anymore, it anymore because right. she died. But then another one stepped forward from the 24th Street Avenue gang. And once it was on TV, then you had another individual come that she claimed she was victim number one with the media and the media resources at, at the, um, the, the uh, plea deal hearing 
But actually, her case was never brought in, in front because she was not a victim, and, and they didn't even prosecute her case. Mm. But the media portrayed her as, as victim number one. Mm. And they did bring in one other individual that wasn't part of the gang only because they, they needed somebody to come forward. They tried very hard in trying to bring uh, false victims, as I would call it, to, to the front, you know, yeah. making these allegations against Jesse. So you see this on the news and you're like, what the hell's going on here? Yeah. Uh, does the gang have that much power that they could take an officer off the street? Uh, uh, no tell doubt. us a little bit about that. Oh, yeah. I mean, any, uh, anybody who's a threat to someone's money in their pocket and, and especially big, you know, affiliations like this, uh, you're, you're just asking for yourself. You're not protected at all times. You're, you're, you're asking for trouble. <laughs> when you're messing with people on the street, you know, they're not, they're not going to follow the rules. They're not going to follow the laws. So... If if you're interrupting their fi their finances, they're they're gonna get rid of you. It's, it's as simple as that. So I, I remember you saying you weren't part of the you you were the manager of the girls. Correct. But you also would have a lot of information on uh, how these girls were obtained, and and one of the targets, uh, unfortunately. High, foster homes foster that. homes high schools uh, i mean young girls that were you know pretty much didn't have a direction or know where they were headed next and and ones that were also looking for you know those kind of they were in those areas hanging out with you know people and you know all you had to do is is kind of just um kind of be like a just get them to believe in your vision you know see you know have to kind of portray what you what they want you know kind of you know flashy stuff nice cars and they want those things and then you you promise them those things and then they believe you and then you make sure that you continue making them believe you <laughs> so I remember as long as they're making money you, you know you do that you, know? you do it and part of the investigation was um actually involved the foster home that the foster parent was saying uh i don't want to use the word pimp i don't know if that was you or not that they were referring to but they would say the pimp would come pick up the girl, and it wasn't the girl's boyfriend that she would say that she was being picked up on behalf of her boyfriend, so they would let her go, but it was another individual. And I guess uh, when you find out that um, a location is a foster home, that's pretty much a target, and then you use that girl to recruit others. What were you offering these girls for recruitment? If they were to bring in, say, another girl to the organization, what was the benefit to them? I mean, it, it could be various things. I mean, depends on what what they're really, you know, accomplishing for us. But I mean, they're gonna get all the things like uh, Gucci purses and you know things that they want, nice clothes, nice shoes. Uh, not only that, I mean, uh, you know, these girls are driving nice cars. Typically, you know, we're getting them everything to keep them happy is, or is, is at least uh, supplied with what they need besides just their drugs. You know. Um, you know, it's not always just girls on the street that are living in a in a box or something. It's, some of these girls live nicer than people that are, have nice jobs and stuff. You know, these girls, and they're just they're just using their body for it. And we're just we're just kind of allocating the money. Uh, you know, where to make sure that they're provided, and then everybody else is getting way more money. So, so it's kind of like supply and demand. As long as the demand for the supply you have is is going good and the uh, girls no, have to stay good looking you know typically sure. uh high demand girls so you can't have girls that are you know so heavy on drugs that their face starts getting eaten but their flesh starts getting eaten you know you can those aren't really not going to make money so we kind of try to get rid of those uh girls and how would you get rid of them i just throw them out you're not part of us anymore yeah on I mean, the street, you know, they uh, don't know much you're on your own yeah and try to get it you know drop them off somewhere or i mean some of them would want to if it, there just comes a point where they're just they're just not sharp anymore so they're just not unhelpful they're gonna they're more problems than they're gonna help you with more money you're not gonna help you so just just exit them out just whatever it is <laughs> so basically we're talking about forced labor and when the labor can't be forced anymore because there's not a it's not always demand. forced a lot of these girls come looking for another option to you know to live life another to live outlet. life yeah it's just some some people want drugs and that's girls some girls like drugs so much that they'll do anything for them and they don't want to they don't want to work a regular job because they can't you can't function properly so well i mean the problem i have with it and a lot of our viewers have with it is some of these girls were never on drugs white rat you know, <laughs> i want to say that they were 
they were forced to take drugs, not by you, but by the gang. And, and certain situations, they get them addicted yeah. to heroin, and now they give them to you. So and, you and know, certain situations where you're kidnapping girls and forcing them to do. But drugs. this was but happening. Was, this was happening with the gang, not sure, with you. Maybe you not were, with me, but yeah, with other and people. And you that knew what was happening with uh, the gang. Yeah. So you know, let's let's be fair and honest yeah. with our viewers here that some of these girls are are drugged up. Uh, if if you could say something to the normal mother out there that has a daughter to prevent this, how would you prevent your daughter from being prey or victim to not just somebody like you, but somebody of the gang that's going to drug them up? Spend time with them and, you know, really spend time, not just like the regular, you know, really try to raise your children to think right. If you don't, they're going to stray or don't be too rough either. I believe that, um, you know, parents that are really strict with their kids and shelter them, uh, it's what makes them rebel. And these girls at 16, 17, 15 are running away from home. They need somebody to, to, to somewhere to go. And uh, their last, sometimes their last place is a, someone like me or, you know, a pimp that uh, is going to provide them with all these things that they're, that they're looking for that they couldn't get from their family or friends or whatever. So, uh, you know, you know I, I would say, you know, if I had a daughter, um, I would make sure that, you know, you watch out who she's hanging out with. And uh, I might even private, give her a, get her in a private school or uh, or homeschooler so she's not too exposed but then also let them see the world let them see how bad it is because when you shelter them they don't get to you know see this stuff and then all of a sudden they're involved in it you know it's not, yeah so i guess it's kind of like uh like a little kid when you say don't touch the hot pot type of and thing. then they touch the, hot, touch pot. the hot pot <laughs> i did gotcha. the same thing so but yeah but in these particular instances what you see with these girls is they come from tough environments tough homes yeah. Some of them Stricter, are really strict. strict dads, you know, that are they're probably not only, you know, beating them. And, and they also have a lot of trauma. Most of these girls c could have been molested when they were kids. Uh, you know, a lot of them have personality issues, uh, you know, like narcissistic personality disorder, bipolar issues from drugs. It could be naturally. Uh, then they have like even far worse, like borderline personality disorder. I and mean, it's all crazy, uh, but it's typically drugs that caused these uh psychological issues in my opinion um but uh yeah you know it, it's it's usually within, within the home that causes these girls to go in that direction so and we're just there to catch them when they like a fl fly trap you know so you, you i think you said a good word a fly trap you're there to catch them when they come out of these in environments and they're looking for a different outlet in life whether it's uh, prostitution whether it's even feeling part of something because uh, being in part of a gang, most people join a gang because they want to be part of part something. Of something. Yeah. They want that support group behind them, that emotional support group. Even though in, in this particular incident, incident they have a, a support group, but it's not what society looks at as a support group. Right. Maybe ex explain the support that you give these girls. Yeah, you give them shelter. Yeah, I mean, you give them homes. But like what I kind said, of emotional support. They're, do you they're, we're g providing them with a vision that uh, you know they have. We have a vision, and we've they want certain things besides just drugs. And they're human beings, so they want uh, to. Pr and we just got to always make sure that we're working towards that vision, and 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 at the same time making sure that they feel protected and have security. Uh, you know, which are two different things. <laughs> you know? So, you know, obviously, uh, eventually the, the, the gang was uh, dismantled, torn apart. I know they opened up in other names and stuff like that. The organization is still running. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of uh, uh, human trafficking uh, with the state attorney's office, a lot of directions. But we see these things sometimes carrying on for two or three years as the investigations go on. But you got out of that street environment correct and now you were involved with uh uh dancers uh, <laughs> russian dancers uh, yeah previous one to us uh well I, you know i have a thing for uh for russian girls uh i feel like i, I just actually found out uh that i'm part russian and ukrainian uh that was a weird uh to find out uh but i just have a thing i i started learning some russian words hang out in like sunny isles or different areas and and uh, yeah, I mean, there's a couple strip clubs uh, get close to them, and, you know, set them up with jobs. Uh, but particularly the Russian girls, because they tend to, you know, like to be a stripper. <laughs> so I help. And I, I'm sure with that comes a lot of uh, pretty much the same thing as drugs. But it's not just Russians, Brazilian, Spanish, people, girls. And, yeah. and now with the situation in Ukraine, I'm sure the demand is even greater for them to find 
work when they're able to come to the U.S. Oh, if they get here, I mean, you get, you know, they're going to make triple the income most people uh, by being uh, involved in stripping or anything they're doing. And strip clubs are just a hub for pimping. <laughs> so uh, obviously, uh, you probably have a lot of connections with the owners of the clubs. Um, Sway, my producer, you could probably get me and him like a free entry on one of these clubs. <laughs> yeah, anywhere you want to go. Well, don't, I don't wait in lines, uh, so yeah, you wouldn't wait in lines either. <laughs> and and do you see a lot of those girls, do, do these club owners do the same thing? Because a lot of these clubs that people don't realize, they're they're actually involved in gangs. And do you see the same thing, that they, they get these girls addicted to drugs, where their addiction feeds into the need of continuing to make that income that they're bringing in? Um, I would say more of the, the owners and such, you know, they, they might be the financers of everything, but a lot of them just have soldiers doing stuff for them so that they can't get in. You know, usually they're going to be the ones investigated if anything happens. So they have people that you never heard of or people that are, you know, that, that are doing all the, the, the other stuff. It's not really them specifically doing the work. They just have, they're paying people from the streets to do the work for them. It's so never, the owners never get implicated or they never get touched. They're correct. just the They're just there the financing. Money yeah, correct. And they're just making sure that you're paying them or getting their money back. So they're always making income. So a lot of people don't realize that, but I, I want to refer to not just the word gangs, but mafia, I want to say. Sure. Uh, the days of the you know Italian mafia, I think, are, are, are over with in, in Florida. Not no, over with in general. I disagree. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I'm, just getting, better at hide. <laughs> I'm getting to that point. And then there were the, uh, in the 80s, you had the uh, pretty much the Colombian mafia running drugs and everything like that. But what people don't realize in Florida is the Russians run the show here. Mm. They run the show of murders. They run the show of violence. And if you look at Fisher Island, that's owned by, by Russian, uh, what do you call, honor guards, yeah, that yeah. Uh, the majority of the locations there. So they're really bringing their money here in droves. Oh, yeah. And they really control the streets, I sure. mean, the high-end streets. I mean, you're talking about hits on individuals. Uh, you just can't say, I'm going to open up a strip club in, in Miami. If you're not part of the underground networking scene, you're going to be murdered. Correct. Is that correct? <laughs> correct. Tell yeah. us a little bit about. Yeah, I mean, if you're not, if you don't know somebody, you know, you're just infringing on their business. So if you get in the way of anybody who's already established, you're gonna get taken out one way or another. You know, it's not maybe not the the top guy, but somebody's gonna send somebody after you, whether it's uh, setting you up on something uh, to get you out of the way, uh, but or just getting you killed. You know, F you fed. So there's a lot of wild hogs out here. They're hungry. <laughs> We've actually were retained and hired by a strip club. You know, of course, I can't say which one it was. And it was the belief that uh, one of the clubs in the South Beach area was providing strippers and, and private strippers inside the club, mm. which was a no-no. So our job was to go in and see who the girl one runner was and who was the one bringing in these girls for the private party. And we filmed, photographed them, provided the information. Whatever happened to this individual, I have no idea because <laughs> I never knew his name. But I could just imagine as many bodies float up in the uh, beautiful Bay and South Beach area of Miami that uh, I could imagine what you know ended up happening to him when they found out that he w was bringing girls into a club that wasn't even licensed. Correct. It goes without saying anything. <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty much we said it right there. So you've actually... You consider yourself a soldier then for these people? No, no, no. I'm I'm my own uh, my own boss. I'm the. I, that's all I want to be. Is no. I don't listen to t told to by anybody. I get a lot of respect because I'm uh, pretty genuine. I don't try to be like anybody else or try to put on something else. Uh, you know, I'm me, and uh, you know, and people respect that. Uh, so, so you don't uh, converse with like the the high end owners, sort of say, because some of them don't even live in Florida. You kind of with. They're high end. I'm with them, but I'm about. not against. I'm not against them, nor am I really with them. You know, Correct. it's all about money and business. We're not friends, hanging out, having coffee in the morning or anything. So you're like, I have four girls coming in. What are you going to pay me for them? Right. Now, is this like a residual income for you as well until they if finally wanna... say these are our girls now? No, yeah. I mean, I, if I want to keep making money, I have to be make sure that I'm a part of something. I'm offering them something that they can't get themselves. 
So, gotcha. so yeah, getting getting girls would be benefit me because they're gonna eventually not. It's like uh, animals. If you keep making an animal use it, use its defensive tactics, and it stops eventually using its defensive tactics when it's not working. Same thing with the girls. You know, stop. You know, they stop being. Uh, I don't know. The people don't want them as much. I guess when they stop, like. So being innocent is, I guess they lose something, I guess, and people so that, want that's more. That's a, a good analogy, you know, an animal with his defense tactics. Pick an animal. It's like breaking their spirit. You make them use their defensive tactics and it doesn't work, <laughs> then they, ha they, they give up. It breaks their spirit. So let's relate that to what you said. Pick an animal, explain to the viewers the defense tactic and what that animal does with their defense tactic and how it relates to you. Sure, take an alligator. Naturally, they're afraid of you. But if you mess with an alligator, he'll bite you or he'll turn around and try to defend himself. But if you uh, make him try to defend himself over and over and over for 10 years or five years, uh, eventually he no longer turns around and tries to bite you because it's, not gonna, it's never worked for him before. So eventually he'll just sit there and let you do whatever he does because you've never killed him or hurt him in the process. So he just learns to just give up and not, not fight back. You ever grab an iguana? We have a lot of those down here. They're real fast and swim away really quick. But if you grab them, they give up. <laughs> they don't do anything. <laughs> so they don't bite you, these big iguanas? They look like... No. No, they don't fearful. typically try to bite you at all. They just stop and freeze when you t when you hold them. So you could just grab an iguana, pick it if up. If you can catch them, yeah. It's <laughs> but that, that's <laughs> so when you relate that to, to these women, um, it, it, the relationship is they just let you do what you want because uh, you're you're providing them food, you're providing them shelter, right? You're providing but, them. But, but eventually, you know, their spirit seems to get like broken. I think, and then you know, it's, it's anybody. You know, they they it's, the too much drugs. It just it gets you one day, and then eventually you need, you know, you got to replace that. <laughs> so I, I see that you got yourself a, a Gucci jacket there uh, too. Uh, yeah, actually, guess, somebody bought this for me. <laughs> I can imagine who. I can just imagine. Uh, that that's fascinating. You also have, you said, an exterminating company that that you open as well so you kind of used your money uh i mean i don't know i mean could this be like a monday laundering operation <laughs> no. uh, this pest control company or is it a legitimate pest control company no that was, you're out there getting work and you're yeah, working I mean, your ass off or is it something <laughs> as that much as i want to advertise you know uh uh no I, I i had to work for companies and i had to get my licenses and uh yeah no i'm a i own a pest control company i have a, a worker tending a house for me right now while we're here okay. Uh, I mean, obviously, you, you wanted to withhold your identity today. I'll get you some personal referrals on that side. You have your, your face. A uh, little covered up. A little yeah. covered up, <laughs> at, at least on there. But it's, it's, you know, your main thing for coming forward is, you know, you knew Jesse was set up. You wanted to get out the story of the real deal of what happened. And um, Gotham Investigations, I mean, if you have any of these money launderers that need to hire us for thirty or $40,000 case, send their money our way. We'll be glad to sign them up. Okay. So um, many of our viewers out there and our people would look at you as the, the scum of the earth. I know you got mad earlier on uh -huh. that. Yeah. But I mean, if you don't do it, it's going to be somebody else doing somebody it. Somebody else, yeah. So, you know, how do you portray yourself as a human being and where it brought you and does your... Do you have a family? Does your family know what you were involved in? No, I don't have a family. I'm not close to anybody. I'm what some people would call a lone wolf. They call me sometimes. My nickname's El Lobo Wolfman, because <laughs> but I, you know, I'm. That's another analogy I'd like to just point out. Well, I just came up with that uh, white rat name. Yeah. But uh, because you can, I remember you said the exterminator, but yeah, I guess we we'll call you. I don't uh, appreciate those names because I wouldn't consider myself a rat. I'm just sharing. Well, some I just stuff. used that as in a you know uh, a, a, you a know, name because I don't even care. Down, you know, it doesn't make it. me angry. So we'll refer to you as the Wolfman on there the, you the end of our podcast here that's definitely fits your 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 jacket even though it was what is a it's leopard, a leopard. Jacket. <laughs> and that was given to you as a gift so how do you portray yourself your inner being how do you live with yourself for doing this smoke a lot of weed <laughs> uh, no honestly i don't really think uh i'm doing anything i mean some people it's terrible but you know what's bad to one person is great to another you know sometimes it says what what's 
uh garbage to one man is a treasure to another you know so it's just i'm living my life i'm trying to get survive i'm trying to stay out of prison and uh i'm trying to trying to get somewhere and uh i have a vision myself and that's where i'm i'm, I'm going and and nothing's gonna really get in the way and and, and if, if it requires me to do some things that i'm not gonna be proud of it's not gonna keep me from sleeping at night i still need my eight hours <laughs> you know there you have it gotham investigations sergeant jesse Menicol. Somebody from the street, an individual that came forward because he knows Jesse Menicol and he feels it in his heart was set up. And it took a lot for him to be here on our show today because obviously there's people out there that would probably want your ass coming forward with <laughs> sure. this information. Uh, yeah, and I mean, hey, right here. <laughs> and, and I guess that's part of uh, why you can live with yourself because, you know, this was a struggle with you seeing him on tv why did he take a plea why did he take a plea if they if you knew inside that he was set up by these gang members and he was set up by these girls yeah. so uh i guess that's you know you could you could look at yourself in the mirror today and say i did a good i thing. did something all right <laughs> you did. thank you for being on our show wolf man all right no problem man and stay tuned for our next episode thank you for joining are you a fan of our show? Do you like our show? Then comment, hit the like button, and subscribe, or you might be the next one we investigate.